Hey, Elise Pickett here with The Urban Harvest, and today I wanted to share with you my top 10 picks for leafy greens in your winter vegetable garden. I focus a lot of my efforts on leafy greens because they lose their nutrition so quickly when you look at um, from harvest time to more often than not several weeks later for putting it on your table. Um, spinach, for example, loses about 90% of its vitamin C within the first 24 hours of harvest. Craziness. So that's why I focus so much of my efforts on growing those just so I can get the most nutritional bang for my buck. And luckily in winter time, um, although you can grow leafy greens year round here in Florida, I do, um, and I'm able to provide my family with most if not all of our greens for the year, um, but winter is our prime time to grow leafy greens here. So we are going to do a quick rundown of my top 10 picks for leafy greens in your winter garden. My first pick for the winter garden is Bloomsdale Long Standing Spinach. It's a crowd favorite. Everybody uses spinach. It's such a common leafy green that almost anybody can get behind. Unfortunately, we do have a super short growing season here in Florida. We're talking about just a couple of months uh, to get the seed in the ground just because they really do like cool weather. And clearly we don't get a heck of a lot of that here in Florida. Tatsoi is one of my most highly recommended leafy greens for the Florida gardener. It is very similar to spinach. It's technically in the bok choy family, but it has a very mild flavor. Um, the stem is pretty tender as far as most bok choys are concerned. Um, so you can use it as a spinach substitute super easily, um, raw or cooked. Tatsoi is able to handle the fluctuating heat uh, and cold much, much better than a traditional spinach. And you can actually use it as a curb uh, planting. So I'll usually plant it in very early fall and very late spring so that I can extend my spinach harvest as much as possible. Curable about whether people like spinach or kale more. Uh, personally, I like kale more. My husband's a spinach fan, but uh, they don't do great here all year round. Um, they do tend to like cooler weather and there are a few varieties that I will grow in the winter garden, uh, red Russian kale being one of them. But if I only had one kale that I could grow in my garden, it would 100% be the lacinato. It's also known as dinosaur kale or um, Nero de Toscano, there's a lot of common names for it, but they have longer, really heavily savoyed, deep, deep greenish blue leaves. They're delicious um, in soups and stews. Um, they grow wonderful here in Florida, much, much better than any of the other varieties. Um, you can grow this year round, or very nearly year round if the pests don't get it over the summer. Next on the list is arugula. I love to plant arugula in the garden. It grows really, really easily here. Uh, if you're not careful, it will actually take over your entire garden bed. It self seeds super, super easily. If you like a more uh, mild flavor, pick it while the leaves are young and tender. If you really want a peppery zip, let the leaves get a little bit more mature. And something that some people uh, may not realize is the flowers are edible. So if you want to enjoy uh, some pretty edible flowers in your salad or whatnot, that's always a fun thing to do. Uh, just make sure you are careful if you do let them go to seed uh, or you will end up with lots and lots of arugula. The Swiss chard is in the same family as beets. Beets have been selected for the roots in most cases and uh, Swiss chard has been selected for the leaves. Most people know Swiss chard uh, in the rainbow chard um, where it has the beautiful, brilliant um, pink and yellow and white stems. 
but I kind of like to go, I'll plant that sometimes, but I like to go a little bit different route, and that's with the Ford Hook Giant Swiss Chard. I like it because I can use the stem as a celery substitute and you still get that delicious Swiss chard flavor from the leaves. They get absolutely gigantic. So you only need one or two plants in your garden to easily feed the family for the entire season. Just mentioned Swiss chard, so now it's time to talk about beets. So many people plant beets for the roots but I absolutely love to use beets as a leafy green as well so that it gives the beet roots time to develop while still giving me something usable from the garden. I'll harvest the greens as soon as you have, you know, three or four leaves um, per plant. And it doesn't really slow the growth down too much. So to me, it's definitely worth using it as a leafy green in addition to the roots. If you're a huge beet fan and you really want those roots to get super big, I would probably skip thinning the greens and using them in your salads. But if you're fine with slightly smaller roots, then this is an awesome way to grow your leafy greens. Mescaloon is a nice variety mix of uh, loose leaf salad greens. Uh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Uh, typically does include some arugula, also some oak leaf, and some of your um, other red and green loose leaf varieties. It's just a nice way to mix up the salad, get a lot of different flavors going, and it really adds a pop uh, to the salad instead of just your plain Jane romaine. I love loose leaf lettuces because you can harvest them as they grow through the season instead of uh, heading lettuce, which is just cut it, and then you're done. Time to replant. So I typically try to grow loose leaf lettuce when at all possible. Black Seeded Simpson is technically a heading lettuce variety, but it's much looser than um, say an iceberg or a romaine. So you can still harvest the leaves as they're growing and developing, which I like. And it is extremely heat tolerant when looking at leafy um, lettuces if you do want a very traditional uh, salad green to grow here in Florida, most of the time it really takes some cool weather, but the black seeded Simpson can really hold its own in our fluctuating temperatures. Collard greens are a Southern favorite for good reason. They grow great here in the South and Florida is included, but I am not growing Florida collards. I am growing Georgia collards. They're a, a standard for collard greens. They produce a wonderful large leaf um, that's greenish blue in color. Wonderful addition to your winter garden. Mustard greens are another great thing to grow for the Florida gardener, just like those collard greens. They do great in the South. Uh, my brother-in-law actually likes to mix in mustard greens with his collard greens when he's cooking them, and it is delicious. You can harvest the young leaves, uh, nice and tender, for a little bit of a peppery, arugula zip to your salads or um, on egg sandwiches, um, almost like a microgreen topping, or you can let the leaves get larger and more mature and use them as a cooking green like you would a collard green. Very, very delicious. And most people usually just grow a standard green variety, but I always like to have a little fun with it. So I like to grow red mustard as well as some of the green broadleaf mustards. Hope you found this video helpful and it gave you some new varieties to try out in your Florida vegetable garden. If you aren't aware, I also do have a seed club. It's all Florida-based vegetables that grow great here in our climate. I change them out every month um, so that everything's seasonal, so you can kind of get a hang of the seasons and also a lot of new fun varieties to try. So it will definitely broaden your horizons as far as that's concerned. If you want more info information on that, uh, go ahead and click the link down below and you can learn more about that. And if you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button while you're down there so you're alerted every time a new video comes out. Enjoy the beautiful winter weather and happy gardening. Mm -hmm.